Uh, here on uh, Neil's homestead, this is March the 1st, with a beautiful morning, sun shining. A little chilly at 24 degrees, but it's warming up fast. And I think we're going to get up upper 50s maybe today. And so that's encouraging. We even had a, our first pair of geese on the far, on our lake this morning. We wish they'd stay and have their family, but they never do. They, I guess we're too close to the lake for them to be comfortable. This day reminded me of when I was a kid, back in the 30s and 40s, and March 1st was moving day, because through the Depression, almost all the farmers who owned land at all uh, lost either their farm either to the banks who had financed them or else to county taxes, which if you can't pay your taxes in three years, they sell your property on the courthouse square or stairs. And the few people who had the money bought up a large portion of the farmland in this territory. Of course, those people didn't want to farm themselves, so it turned out to be kind of a sharecropper situation. We had about an eight-year drought at the same time, and no one could hardly raise any crops because we didn't have any water systems to assist our crops at all or our livestock. You couldn't make any money on them, so the farmers were always looking for a different farm to share crop on, and the owners were always looking for a different tenant because they wasn't making any money either on it because you just could not raise a crop. And so March the 1st, it was almost neighborhood shuffling around. And it just kind of agreed among all the peoples to move on that day. And one thing I remember about it, it was always, always just terribly muddy because the snow, which we did have, had just, had just melted. And there were no gravel roads in our territory. It was all dirt roads and those mud roads would get so muddy a low wheel wagon would just roll up and the horses couldn't hardly pull them. So we kind of had to borrow the high wheel wagons which they kind of trade them around through the neighborhood and everybody helped everybody move because they would go ahead and go through the mud. But it was a big day because you had to move all your furniture and usually all your livestock, which wasn't much, but when you got a number of people moving at the same time, it creates quite a lot of work and you just had to kind of get it all done in one or two days. The large portion of the farmers were moving, so they kind of worked together and get the job done. We didn't have hardly any ponds or anything that would survive through a drought. Every year they went dry because there was no real means to dig them except with a scoop or a, what you call a tumble bug to pull behind horses. And to get a pond three or four foot deep, you had to do a lot of work. It took a lot of time. Consequently, there wasn't very many ponds capable of supporting even any livestock. And uh, houses were obviously so run down, and there was very, very few houses that had a bathroom at all because it wasn't even practical because you couldn't have water in the house because 
there wasn't any, hardly, just a cistern, which didn't supply very much water, really. But we also didn't have electricity. We didn't have electricity in our neighborhood till 1948. And then people put in some bathrooms because they could pump the water into the house. The old houses are pretty common after a few years. Uh, floors were rotting out and you couldn't afford to replace carpets or anything like that. And so you just had to move and live in what you had. And uh, one of the houses we lived in, in the winter, when the wind would blow, we, we had just linoleum laying on the floor. When the wind would blow, uh, you could see the vinyl raise up and go back down. The uh, old foundations were just full of cracks and they were basically stone foundations and wasn't sealed. <laughs> a lot of people used newspapers and would fasten them on the wall to use as insulation because they'd go over the windows and all with those newspapers because there were just cracks all around almost every window they ever house. And that would shut out some of that cold air coming in. But of course, everyone either burned coal or wood. They had to take their own stoves. They were just freestanding wood or coal burning stoves. And you took one when you are lucky enough to get a good one. But it seemed to be superstitious that you left your room or else you were going to have bad luck. So people left their broom when they moved, but they got another one probably when the house they got to. And another thing which complicated things, it was during World War II area. Very few people had an automobile. If they did, they were blocked up because when your tires wore out, you couldn't buy any others because they were rationed and you couldn't buy tires for your car. So even if you could afford to buy, you couldn't use your car anyway. If your car was blocked up, you had to take it down off the blocks and air up the tires and move it. But you had to move it on very worn out tires because you, you ran the tires still they were bare because you couldn't replace them. But you'd take your car with you, of course. But very few people actually had a car at that time. Well, one reason, probably the main reason, you moved on March the 1st because you need to get moved and ready when the season warmed up enough to plant your crops and you had to be ready to plant or else you'd be too late. It, it caused quite a stir in the neighborhoods at that time. Just getting moved around, and getting your livestock moved, and being able to get fences up enough to hold them where you want them. The average person didn't have very much livestock. Those were very difficult times for people, but it seemed like they all kind of worked together a lot and they tried and were pretty successful at being reasonably happy. Everyone was striving to do better, but through the probably 10 year period or maybe a little more, you just couldn't do better hardly because of the depression, which you ended up, you didn't have any money and there were no prospects of making any money. You couldn't even get a job hardly. If you did, it was 50 cents the rest of the hour. And so you didn't have much hopes on that. And no one even considered at all that the government was going to have to come and help you. Uh, Roosevelt did bring in a, 
a helping program. Uh, I can't think what it's called now, but they gave people a very low paid jobs of public work, which helped a lot. But then again, if you were farming, you couldn't hardly go work on a regular job for a while during the planting or harvesting or, or tending to your crop at the same time. You about had to choose. Are you going to farm or are you going to work on a WPA? That's what it was. WPA jobs. You had to show up and work. Work in those days meant work because everything you did was by hand. But it, it was a great help. And it kind of got in a few years there to where after the war was over and machinery age came in, uh, power machinery, it got, got you where you could eat. But a lot of people through that period of time actually were hungry. The rabbits and everything, squirrels, they got eat. <laughs> and, but fortunately there was a lot of rabbits and a lot of squirrels at that time. And so that, that was a real blessing. People today don't realize what blessings they have with that make their life so much easier than what it was a hundred years ago or 80 years ago even. But we are truly blessed to have water, bathrooms, automobiles, and enough money to support all of it. People still get themselves in a real bind because they buy so much stuff they don't need that they can't hardly pay for what they do need. But that's the learning process, I guess. And we may learn that in the next few years.